You sure? <laughs> You know, the budget is painful in the amount of detail involved. And uh, now we're hoping to spread the pain to you. <laughs> uh, but uh, we are hoping that you'll be able to describe the whole process in such a way to the, to the public that you can bring some greater understanding to all of the complexities of it all. To begin with, let me just say that today is the first of three presentations actually related to the 2018 budget. As you know, the city budget is a large and complex blueprint for achieving the goals we set for the community mostly a financial blueprint. That's why talking about it in smaller pieces will lead to a better community conversation about what we're proposing and how it fits into plans for Lincoln's future. When I set out to develop this budget, we pulled people together and we asked what they wanted us to accomplish, including the city council in early meetings, and later the public generally through our taking charge process. The process has helped us decide the three basic principal goals that our administration has set out for the 2016-18 budget. And they are keeping our community safe, transportation and infrastructure that supports growth, and taking care of what we have. Today, we'll be addressing how our administration's budget proposal meets our goal of transportation and infrastructure that supports growth. Streets are a top priority. A safe and efficient transportation system is critical to a thriving community. And that's why Lincoln's investments in streets has increased by 58%. Since 2010, at a time when federal transportation revenues fell flat and were uncertain, we started working hard to increase local and state funding for states, and those efforts are paying off. We have improved 72 miles of arterials and 487 blocks of residential streets during the last six years. South 56, Northwest 48th, Old Shaney, North 84th, North 33rd, Capitol Parkway, Sheridan Boulevard, Southwest 40th, and 98th Street all have been improved thanks to our increasing street investment as a community. I recognize that moving so aggressively on street construction requires patience on the part of the public but we have to keep our eyes on the prize. Smoother streets for better traffic flow and increased safety. Great, great benefits to the community. Improving our streets is worth the temporary inconvenience and we appreciate how Lincoln drivers are working with us, following detours, watching out for workers, and keeping their fellow Lincolnites safe. The 2016-18 budget will continue our record-setting pace on street investment. The community will invest $56.2 million in our streets in the 2016-17 budget, including several projects in the two-year budget and six-year CIP that are critical for traffic safety and efficiency, as well as economic growth. Our strong street investment is due in part, honestly, to the legislature's passage of LB 610, which will provide 1.3 million in additional funding for the 2016-17 budget and an additional 2.3 million for the 2017-18 budget. As we have 
planned our capital improvement program, our long range transportation program, uh, and the street budget. These new revenues helped advance design and construction planning on several of the projects discussed today. The South Beltway is funded in the six year capital improvement program. After decades of planning, the South Beltway is scheduled to start construction in 2020. It is a critical need. The growing number of vehicles on Highway 2 makes it increasingly congested and slows traffic movement. The South Beltway will relieve this pressure by diverting a large uh, deal of traffic off of Highway 2 and around the edge of the city. Lincoln must provide a 20% local match or about $40,000. $40,000. I keep hoping, you know. <laughs> about $40 million of the $200 million total South Beltway cost. We have already paid the state 16 million. Our county partners in the project continue to assure us that 13 million will be available through the Railroad Transportation District. We are grateful to the county board for their commitment. The final $11 million is planned out in the current six year CIP. Putting the South Beltway funding in place is a tremendous victory for the community and will pay dividends for decades to come. In addition to the South Beltway investments, 15.5 million will be spent on arterial construction uh, and improvements and 5.4 million will be spent on residential improvements over the next two years, more than ever before. These new investments are allowing progress to occur faster all around the community. The residents of West Lincoln have been waiting for some time for the improvements to West A Street. We are now able to move up that project by one year to 2019-20 from its original 2020-21 start date. The repairs from Folsom to the West City limits are a high priority. West A was built as a county standard road, but with West Lincoln's development, the street now serves a rapidly growing traffic load. West A needs to be able to accommodate that progress as quickly as possible. In North Lincoln, residents will be seeing repairs sooner than previously planned on North 33rd and North 48th Street. 33rd from Holdridge to Madison that was scheduled for 2018 has been moved up to 2017 <clears throat> to better coordinate with the storm drainage repair project approved by voters through the watershed bond in May of this year. <coughs> 48th Street from Superior to north of Doris Bear Circle will be completed in 2018. In addition, 63rd Street between Judson and Fremont will see faster progress. 63rd is a key route past Pershing School and serves a lot of parents and children. 68th Street between Fremont and Morrill is another heavily traveled street serving many Northeast Lincoln residents. In South Lincoln, where we've seen tremendous growth, Yankee Hill Road, Pine Lake Road, Rokeby Road, and the 14th and Warlick intersection and Old Shaney intersection will all be improved as part of the six year CIP. In addition to traditional concrete infrastructure improvements, we are also using smart traffic innovations to get traffic moving more quickly as part of the 2016-18 budget. 
Our green light Lincoln program takes advantage of the city's recent investment in conduit and high speed fiber. This next generation infrastructure allows us to manage traffic in real time and better coordinate and improve traffic signal timing. Investing in smart traffic innovations and technology will help families and businesses reach their destinations more quickly with greater safety. Our budget reassigns three employees and equipment to implement Green Light Lincoln. For a large and growing segment of the community, transportation includes public transit, StarTran. Many Lincoln families depend on our bus system to get them to work, school, medical appointments, and the other places of business in daily life. A study was commissioned last year to recommend changes to improve our bus system. The study took feedback from bus riders on what was needed to make StarTran better for them. Riders identified their priorities as later hours of service, buses arriving more frequently, and improved crosstown routes. A number of these changes were adopted by the City Council earlier this year and, were and are scheduled currently to go into effect starting this fall. Those changes were revenue neutral. The report recommended further improvement phases uh, that needed additional funding to be identified. Several council members and many StarTran writers felt strongly that the city should identify funding and also implement the next stage of the report known as phase one. Therefore, uh, we have included five new bus drivers in the 2016-17 budget to implement phase one recommendations. The new drivers will allow us to offer later service on the South 13th, North 27th, Havelock, Star Shuttle, O Street, Arnold Hikes, and South Point routes, all of them. South 13th and North 27th will also see more frequent bus arrivals. The changes will help us provide a more complete bus system that better, needs the, that better meets the needs of a growing community. It will bolster employment for those who do not work eight to five and need later bus hours to hold a job. Waits for buses will be shorter, encouraging more people to use StarTran for shopping, for medical appointments, for school. StarTran management was also able to create a plan to reduce overtime costs. Their analysis demonstrated that hiring three new employees, two additional StarTran drivers and one supervisor is actually less expensive than paying current employees time and a half. This change will save about $85,000 in the 2017-18 budget and make StarTran more efficient. Lincoln's phenomenal growth and national reputation did not happen by accident. We have made the decision to invest in infrastructure and our choice has paid off with strong private sector investments, steady economic growth, and low unemployment. Transportation is not the only infrastructure that will see needed investment in the 2016-18 budget. Extending water and wastewater service and replacing water and wastewater mains is a key to continued city growth. Replacement mains help us attract redevelopment dollars to established areas in Lincoln. New water and wastewater service encourages entrepreneurs to drive the new construction that is so important to our economy. The new CIP calls for increasing the, the pace of water main replacement from 
five and a half miles per year to seven miles per year, a 27% increase. Three new water employees will be added to the budget to accomplish this accelerated pace. Wastewater continues to expand service into the Stevens Creek Basin and other new growth areas with new funding for sanitary sewer truck lines and increased capacity at the Northeast Wastewater Treatment Facility. These investments will allow continued growth of the city to the east. A growing community is a community that invests in infrastructure. The budget I will offer this week devotes more resources than ever before to transportation and water infrastructure. It is the right investment at the right time to continue Lincoln's amazing record of economic success and strong revitalized communities. All right, is that enough to sort out until tomorrow when we have our second press conference on the budget? Tomorrow we'll be discussing police and fire and rescue. I have a question just about the wastewater. Was that accelerated by last year's flooding? Was it what? The wastewater decision, was that accelerated by last year's flooding? So so many people I, with that? I think it was planned ahead of last year's flooding. You may want to talk a little bit more about it, Donna. This is Donna Garden who runs that particular division of public works. I know it was not accelerated by the flooding at all. Um, this was part of the CIP. It was accelerated in the time frame because we have development interest in that area. Donna, can you say your name and position? Oh, sorry. Bit? My name is Donna Garden, and I am the Assistant Director of Public Works and Utilities. Senior, where does, does, the, does the city have enough revenue then to pay for all this, or does something else have to happen? Or? Well, this is one piece of the whole budget. We're trying to lay it out for you one piece at a time and put it all together then for you on the way we always do it when we have it all together and everybody's there at one time to hear it. So uh, you'll, you'll see very clearly how this all fits together in the end. But we just, it's such, there's such big pieces of information we wanted to get out to you uh, how, how things what is sought to be accomplished in these major areas so that when you hear about how all the pieces fit together, you'll know what pieces we're actually talking about and the good, the bad, and the ugly related to those pieces. And I think a lot of people, you know, this summer there's so much construction, but you're saying by and large it's just a byproduct of how much growth Lincoln has seen, correct? Oh, it is. It's a byproduct of how much how much growth uh, we've had and our response to that growth, uh, uh, attempting to keep up with it and to find funding to keep up with it. Uh, uh, there, there are certain assumptions that go along with certain economic models. And one of those assumptions when you adopt a growth model is that uh, things will accelerate, and when they do accelerate, you have to be ready on the on the city side to invest in the infrastructure that responds. The, the infrastructure has to respond to that growth, and if that if that growth dividend gets sidetracked in any sort of serious manner into uh, any other activities, uh, then you're kind of asking for problems. And you'll hear more about that as we talk about the budget. All right. You good to go for today? Let's see a big budget smile on each one of your faces here. <laughs> Thank you.